Hey guys! So if you follow me on Twitter, then you probably know that I am pretty obsessed with a Game of Thrones, and I've been getting a lot of questions about it, like should I watch the show, should I read the book, should I read the book and then watch the show? So I decided to just do an entire video on a Game of Thrones, and I'm going to be talking about the book and then going into the HBO TV series a little bit and comparing it to the book and just giving you guys my opinion on it. So first things first, this ta -da, is a Game of Thrones. It is the first book in A Song of Ice and Fire, which is an epic fantasy series by George R. R. Martin. And there are currently five books in the series, and it is rumored that Martin is writing the sixth and seventh novels. And if you are like me and you are a fan of the series, I know you have your fingers crossed for those novels to come out very soon. So deep breath because there's a lot going on in this story. So basically, A Game of Thrones at its core is a mystery. Now I say at its core because that is what the main storyline kind of revolves around, but it's surrounded by all of this epic fantasy stuff. So that's why it is considered an epic fantasy novel because it's set in this medieval world um, that is very similar to our reality, but it is technically in this like alternate reality because there are mythical creatures involved and magical things, but for the most part, it is a very human world. Now with the Game of Thrones, it is very important to pay attention to the characters because there are lots of them and lots of relationships and lots of complex things going on in the story. But at the same time, it's very fun to read. So I'm going to try and simplify the story for you guys and hopefully this comes across the way that I want it to. Now the story takes place on the fictional continent of of Westeros, which is divided between the North and the South. The North being ruled by the Starks in Winterfell, which is like the capital of the North. Like I said earlier, A Game of Thrones at its core is a mystery, and the mystery is how did Jon Arryn die? Now Jon Arryn is the Hand of the King, so the King of Westeros is Robert Baratheon, and the Hand of the King is basically like the King's advisor. He helps him with political decisions and basically does all the stuff Stuff that, the, that the king doesn't want to do, so all the boring stuff. So John Aaron dies, and that means the king needs a new hand. So the king leaves King's Landing in the south and travels up north to Winterfell to see Lord Eddard Stark. Now Eddard Stark, or Ned Stark as he is nicknamed, go way back. They were really close and they were basically like brothers. The king goes up all the way to Winterfell to ask Ned to be the new hand because he feels like he can't trust anybody around him and Ned is the only person left that he can truly trust. Ned is reluctant but eventually agrees to go south with the king. Ned starts to believe that John Aaron didn't die of natural causes. He believes that he was murdered. So it kind of revolves around John Aaron's death and who killed John Aaron, why, and that is what the story is about. Now there is a lot going on around that mystery, and when I say a lot, I mean a lot. So now that you know the basic core of A Game of Thrones, we're gonna get into the nitty gritty stuff. And this is a very complex story, but while you're reading it, it's very, very easy to follow. The way that this book is written is just incredible, but explaining it can be a little bit more difficult because I am not a genius like Mr. Martin here. One of the things I love most about this book is the way that it is written. It is written through eight different character perspectives. So instead of numbered chapters, each chapter focuses on a different character's story, which makes it a very, very interesting read and really connects you to different characters. And if you don't like a certain character, you don't have to worry about it because that chapter is not going to last that long. And then you'll move on into a character that you do like a little bit better. But as far as I go, I like all the characters. Characters, even if I end up loathing them, they are still really interesting characters to read about. And that is when you know a book is good, when you can love characters that you hate, if that makes sense. So running through those eight characters, first we have Lord Eddard Stark, who is the Lord of Winterfell in the North. Then there is Caitlin Stark, who is Eddard's wife and Lady of Winterfell. There is also Jon Snow, who is Ned Stark's bastard son. Sansa Stark, who is the oldest daughter of Ned and Caitlin. Then her sister, Arya Stark, and their little brother, Bran Stark. 
Then there is Tyrion Lannister, who is the younger brother of the Queen. So Cersei Lannister is married to Robert Baratheon, and she is the Queen of the Realm, and her younger brother is Tyrion. And then last, but certainly not least, is my personal favorite character, Daenerys Targaryen. I love her, she is by far my favorite character, and she is part of the old dynasty of the Targaryens, and the Targaryens used to rule the realm before King Robert came in and took the throne. And you get the background of the story in the book. So Daenerys and her brother are the only survivors in their family and they fled across the sea in the east so that's where they are. So that is a basic rundown of the eight character perspectives in A Game of Thrones. Another thing that I really love about A Game of Thrones is that it follows three storylines at the same time. And that makes for a very very interesting read because you'll be reading and reading about one story and it builds you up and then moves to a different story. So it kind of leaves you hanging with a cliffhanger and there are lots of twists and turns in this book and things that you would not expect and you're just like, oh my gosh, where did that come from? I was not expecting that to happen. Martin is a true genius in that sense. So getting into the three storylines, the first one revolves around what's going on in the Seven Kingdoms. So Westeros is divided into seven kingdoms and this part of the story just kind of revolves around what's going on in the royal highborn world. So what's going on with the Starks and what is going on with Ned going south to King's Landing and becoming the Hand of the King. There is murder, romance, betrayal, everything and anything that you could ever wish for in a story is in this book. The second storyline follows the happenings at the Wall. Now the Wall is up north above Winterfell and it is basically this huge barrier, this huge icy wall that is hundreds of miles long. It is a massive, massive wall and it is there to kind of protect the rest of the realm from what lies above it. So all of the creatures and mystical things that are up there that could cause harm to the realm beneath. The wall is manned by the Night's Watch, which is a group of men who a lot of times are outcasts. So people who have committed crimes and if they aren't sentenced to death, they'll be sent to the wall, which is actually considered worse than death because it is a very hard life. It is very, very cold up there and they have to wear all black. They take the black, so they wear black. They um, vow to basically devote their lives to the wall and protecting the realm. People who are sent up there are basically forced to join the Night's Watch, but there are people like Jon Snow, who is Ned Stark's bastard son, who volunteer to serve on the Night's Watch, and they take a vow of celibacy and, like I said, devote their lives to the wall. Then the third storyline follows all of the events that are happening in the East. So everything that is happening with Daenerys Targaryen and her brother, and her brother is basically very set on getting the throne back and will do anything that it takes to get the throne back and it kind of follows their journey and um, Daenerys just turning into a strong independent woman and it's a very very interesting story so that is the Game of Thrones book in a nutshell but I do want to say that it does have mature content but to me personally I am not bothered by reading scenes of violence in books I'm more bothered by seeing it visually on a TV screen but when I'm reading it for some reason it doesn't really bother me so just kind of keep that in mind there is like incest and you know violence I do recommend discretion when it comes to this book you know yourself better than anyone else so I just want to put that little disclaimer out there because it does have mature content okay so now moving on into the HBO TV series HBO does have a Game of Thrones TV series it is currently in its second season that just premiered on April 1st and I have seen the entire first season twice so I watched the show which made me want to read the book and then I watched the show over again so I could compare it to the book and I have to say they stay very very true to the book which I was so happy about. I think for the time that they have in the TV show they do an incredible job. It is a visually beautiful TV show and I just love how they stay true to the book. They do um, make some liberties in the sexual department so there are some scenes in that 
realm that don't necessarily occur in the book, but it is HBO, so they do add a little bit of that stuff to their TV show just to spice it up, I guess. So just kind of keep that in mind. There is like nudity and violence in the show. I would say as a rule, if you are 15 years of age or older, um, the books are fine to read. As far as the TV show goes, if you are under the age of 18, I would ask your parents first to make sure that it's okay with them. So I did see the very first episode of the second season and I loved it. I read just enough in A Clash of Kings to be able to compare it to the book and I think that the show is just incredible. So I highly recommend watching the show as well. I really think that reading the book and watching the the show just kind of supplement each other but the book definitely supplements the show and I do recommend I don't know because I watched the show and then read the book but it is good to read the book and then watch the show because um, you just get so much more background on the characters because the characters are so deep and you get so connected to them which I love when I read books. That is something that I really look forward to. So that is my video on A Game of Thrones and I'm really looking forward to finishing A Clash of Kings and moving on with the Song of Ice and Fire series because it is incredible. So I hope you guys enjoy this series as much as I do. I really wanted to share this with you guys and I'm sure a lot of you have already read this book and the other books in the series because I've been talking about it with people on Twitter and it's really fun to talk about it with people who are just excited, just as excited about it as I am. So if you love Game of Thrones, talk about it in the comments below because I love talking about it. Tweet me on Twitter about it because I love discussing anything Game of Thrones related. So until next time, I will see you guys later. Bye!